Walking with a high knee drive is fraught with problems. While you may be walking with one foot in contact with the ground at all times, a high knee drive may make it appear for you to lose contact. Even if you do not get disqualified, you still need to be concerned about wasting energy by moving your leg up and down further than necessary. The leg is approximately 15 to 20% of the body's weight, so lifting it higher than necessary, approximately 20,000 times during a 20K race, is a tremendous waste of energy. Additionally, a high knee drive gives you the appearance of running instead of having a fluid movement. Your head may also bounce up and down, creating an added jarring motion in your stride and potentially increasing your chance of injury. Focus on having a quicker lower leg swing. Instead of driving your leg forward with the top of your leg leading the way, once the knee passes under the torso, Focus on swinging the lower leg and the foot as fast as possible until your heel strikes the ground. Focus on swinging your feet like a broom. One method to get your knees lower is to think about your swinging foot like a broom, sweeping as low to the ground as possible. Studies have shown that the higher the foot is swinging through the stride, the more likely the athlete is to get loss of contact violations. Focus on lowering your knee drive. While it may sound obvious, to prevent a high knee drive, focus on keeping your knee low. When the leg swings forward and the knee drives upward, it gives the appearance of loss of contact. By dragging your foot along the ground with a scuff walking drill, you are training your body not to drive the knee high. Once the body is accustomed to walking with a low foot carriage, you can raise the foot slightly and you will be walking with improved knee drive. Walk slowly. Swing the foot so low that you scuff your toes on the ground as they move forward. Do this for 30 to 50 meters, but be careful not to scuff your feet for an entire lap or through an entire workout. Overstriding in front of your body makes it difficult to walk efficiently and can lead to the perception that you've lost contact with the ground. A tight hip flexor causes the rear foot to lift off the ground prematurely and shortens the stride where you want it the longest. In addition, overstriding may be caused due to poor arm swing or just overly zealous effort, usually when you're tired and muscling through. Focus on forward hip rotation. Often overstriding in front of your body is caused by a lack of forward hip rotation. Concentrate on driving your hip forward to reduce the percentage of your stride that is in front of your torso. Focus on shortening your arm swing. Work on reducing your arm swing so that your hands come back to at most 4 to 6 inches behind the hips. The arms, hips, and legs all move in rhythm and are proportional. A decrease in arm swing should reduce the stride length. Some people incorrectly profess that at the peak of the upper arm's range of motion, your upper arm should be parallel to the ground. Instead, the peak of the upper arm's range of motion should come when the upper arm is at approximately a 30 degree angle. When pedestrians walk quickly, they rarely change their technique. They merely walk with a more exaggerated stride at a faster cadence. This gets them only so far or fast. Race walkers, in contrast, change many aspects of their stride, most notably adding a forward drive of the hip as the leg swings forward. Most race walkers who walk with a wide stance do so because they do not rotate their hips forward and therefore inward. Since the hip cannot move forward in a straight line, it must rotate inward as it moves forward. As it does, it causes the foot to land in a straight line. Focus on forward hip rotation. It may seem that we keep repeating hips, hips, and more hips, but they are the key to many problems with the race walking technique. If your feet are not landing in a straight line, it is probably due to a lack of forward hip rotation. When the hip rotates forward, it also rotates inward, causing the feet to land in a straight line. Concentrate on driving your hip forward, and you will naturally straighten out your foot placement. While it's fairly rare to see a race walker cross one foot over the other, it does happen. In fact, we used to speak of it hypothetically until at a recent clinic where a young beginning race walker who lacked the muscle control to keep his legs and feet in line demonstrated this problem as part of his stride. While there are no specific exercises to correct this, use the following two points to correct crossover problems. Focus on walking on a straight line. If you are crossing over the line, then you are wasting effort to the side instead of driving yourself forward. 
Focus on forward hip rotation. Swiveling your hips around the axis that runs through the middle of your body is not desirable. Hip motion must be primarily forward, so consciously extend your hip forward as the leg swings forward while minimizing the inward rotation. A very common problem for race walkers is the circumduction of the swing foot as it travels forward after push-off, and it can be caused by a wide variety of muscle imbalances, tightnesses in many areas, or both. It's most likely due to a weakness or tightness in the hip abductor, hip flexor, quadriceps, hamstrings, or the interiors of your shins. A coach can best assess the exact problem and can recommend a specific set of exercises to correct it. Some walkers can glide by you without your hearing a single footstep. They do this by rolling through the stride, first landing with the toe pointed as the heel makes contact with the ground, and then gradually progressing forward as the toe lowers. In contrast, some walkers land flat-footed, which makes it almost impossible to land with a straightened leg. Other walkers land with the toe pointed, but flatten too quickly. To fix either of these problems, you should practice a subset of the drills, stretches, and exercises we've already introduced for fixing a bent knee. The foot plant drill can train your body to straighten your knee upon foot strike. Stand with your weight on both legs, with your left foot directly in front of your body as if you're getting ready to walk in a straight line. Straighten your left knee and allow it to support all of your weight. Swing your right leg through with your toe and foot as low to the ground as possible. Notice that the motion comes from your upper leg and that your right knee is not straightening. Next, your right lower leg fully extends with the upper part of the leg moving very little. As the right foot strikes the ground, your weight transfers from your left leg to the right. Do not continue to walk forward, rather step back to your original position. Repeat the exercise 10 to 15 times with the left leg, then switch and repeat it 10 to 15 times with the right leg. One of the biggest physical causes of bent knee walking is the lack of adequate shin strength to allow for the foot to land with the toe pointed and roll properly through toe off. The single easiest way to strengthen your shins is to walk on your heels. Walk slowly with a stride of no more than six inches, remembering it's not a race. Focus on how high you point your toes, because the higher you point them, the better and more intensely you'll work your shins. Maintain this technique for 30 meters. If your shins can't handle this distance, stop walking on your heels briefly and stretch out your shins. Once you have stretched properly, resume heel walking the remainder of the 30 meters. Upon completion, always stretch out your shins completely. You'll feel much happier that you did. Strengthening muscles involves balance. While athletes often focus on their shins to correct bent knee walking, they neglect their complementary muscles, the calves. This exercise is similar to the shin strengthening exercise, walk on your heels. However, by slowly walking on your toes, you strengthen your calves. Walk slowly with a stride of no more than six inches. As you walk, focus on your heels and keep them as high off the ground as possible. Walk this way for about 30 meters. If your calves tire quickly, stop walking on your toes briefly and stretch the calves a bit. Then complete the rest of the exercise. If walking 30 meters feels really easy, you could try going a little further. Once you finish the exercise, it's always a good idea to stretch the calves completely. The calf raise exercise also strengthens the calf muscles and help balance the shin strengthening exercises. In addition, by doing so, you enable yourself to push off more easily and with greater force. This exercise is best executed with somebody nearby you to help you maintain balance. Ideally, practice the calf raise on a curb near a pole or step with a handrail. Find a step or curb and position your toes as close to the edge as possible while maintaining your balance. Place both your heels beyond the edge, raising and lowering them through a wide range of motion. Repeat this motion 10 to 15 times, taking care not to cheat by using your upper body for leverage. If you are strong enough, try raising and lowering your body one foot at a time. The toe raise exercise is another good shin strengthening activity to help you land with your toe pointed and roll through toe off. Perform this more advanced shin exercise on the edge of a curb or step. Because balance is sometimes difficult when performing it, make sure you have a pole or wall to steady yourself. 
facing away from the curb or step, place your heels as close to the edge as possible, taking care to remain steady. Pump your toes up and down as quickly as possible. Focus on getting your toes up as high and low as you can, because the greater the range of motion your toes pass through, the better the workout. And please be cautious. The shin muscles are very small and easily irritated. If you overdo this exercise, the shin muscles will become tight and fatigued, making it difficult to race walk properly. You could also increase your risk of injury.